the electric cord in here. Yep, it's still stuck. Um, I actually could feel it with my hands on the other side of this. When I put my hand right there, I can feel the starter right there. I'm gonna put the camera in there and see if you can see it. There it is. See it? That thing right there in the middle, the round thing? To the side of it is the gears. I'm gonna spray some uh, lubricant down there and move it around. See if maybe that might jar things loose. Got this T9 stuff. Seems to work pretty well. Just gonna point it to where it's the uh, where the thing is. Just coat it. <laughs> just, just went nuts. So you know what I did? Uh, while I was um, pressing the button to start the starter, right? I took this thing and I was banging the top of it to make it go down on its own. And look now. Move it around, move it around. The Bendix gear started to retract and then sprayed some more lubricant down there. So now, now it, uh, now it, uh, now it works. So that's great. So we shot some carb spray into the carburetor. It started up, which means the, which means the, uh, uh, ignition coil is good. Uh, let's just put some gas in and see what happens. It's two stroke, remember. I've got this, uh, True Fuel 50 to 1 mix. This is uh, some good stuff. It's also ethanol free. Uh, speaking of ethanol free, I also got this for free because my friend Nick from Bellport gave me one or two or three. Every time I see him, he gives me a can. So I appreciate uh, all the help from Nick from Bellport. He's a good guy. But check him out on the Tractor King 1556 on Instagram. All right, so we got some gassage in here now. We loosened up the starter. We put a new pull cord on the recoil starter. It's prime. Prime doesn't really feel right. Anyway, uh, let's give it a pull. I have a feeling we need to clean the carburetor. Let's put the electric start in since we've got it uh, running, sort of. Let's see if it'll start. So no, no gas seems to be getting to the carburetor. I'm gonna drop the bowl of the carburetor and check out what's wrong because no gas seems to be getting to the carburetor. Let's put a uh, t shirt here because when you take the bowl off, it's going to be messy. Uh, I know I said I was gonna <laughs> split this up into three episodes, but I'm kind of excited that we could probably get this going today. a uh, half inch nut this is the jet nut with the gasket it is clear there's a little small tiny hole there that uh, could be cleaned should be cleaned let's see if there's any stuff in here bone dry which means that it's not getting gas to the carburetor not at all let's even put this down or like they say in Canada, down. Put it down. Oh, we see. But... All right, look. Float is down. Needle is free. So it should be pouring out of it when I lower it. Nothing. See that? It's full of gas. 
and nothing's coming out. Uh, there we go. We got some coming out now. Gas is coming out now. All over my driveway. Okay. We just loosened it up basically, you know what I mean? And uh, it's relatively clean. Let me clean the bowl. We'll get some uh, carburetor cleaner. Up the emulsion tube. And this bowl is pretty clean. It has a little bit of gum right there. Yeah, it came right off. And then we'll put the bowl back. See if it fills up with gasage. See if it goes up the emulsion tube. See if it starts, it stays started, it stays running all by itself. Um, see how this comes down like that? There's a recessed area right there, half moon recessed. Make sure you match that up with the part that's re that goes down. Also, you see notice, this is spring-loaded too. So when it goes like this, it actually spring-loads back up again. Not all uh, Tecumseh carbs are like that. Not all. Gasket looks good. Uh, let's just make sure that this is clean. This is the uh, bowl jet. You can see this, this one, the big one is clear. You can see right through it means it's relatively clean. I'm gonna block that hole and see if stuff comes out here. Yep, I can actually see through it. Yep, it's clear. That little tiny one's clear. Couple of clicks, that's it. Tighten. That's it. Alright, uh, so we know that gas is now getting to the carburetor. Did a quick and dirty on it. Let's put it down. Oh, uh, now the primer bulb t uh, feels feels better. Let's see, just from pulling. Ooh, almost. Let's take it off choke. It wants to. You know what? Stop screwing around. Let's put the electric start in just to get it going.
can see the auger is turning no matter what happens. So that's not normal. Now that we started it up, let's see if you can pull start it. That's great. Uh, this is no good though. <laughs> you know what this is? This is the starter gear. The Bendix gear flew off. That's not good at all. As you can also see, it's leaking. So I just checked out the leak and the leak is actually coming from this little thing right there. There. This thing. I don't know why. It's not coming from the bottom or the gaskets around the bowl. It's that little thing. I always thought that thing was for the primer. As you can see, the primer's up here. Weird. Also, I uh, wanted to show you guys I actually have a starter for this. It doesn't work, it's broken, but this thing is still there, see? So all that fell off was the cotter pin that holds it together, and this washer, and maybe this bushing is bad. So I'm gonna try to reach in there and try to fix it by not even looking at it. <laughs> I'm gonna reach my hand in here and grab the shaft and see what's left on the shaft. What flew off? First thing I feel is this thing. So looking at this one here, I am I have it right there. I'm missing the spring, the rubber thing, and then this thing, then the top washer. So that's what I'm missing. So I need this whole part here because the other stuff just flew off somewhere. I have no idea. So I'll put this back on the shaft. I'm doing this blind. I can't see it, right? Uh, I'd say that the spring would have to go on next. Put the spring on here. Then I've got this rubber thing. And I've got the Bendix gear. And I've got this washer. Okay, so now it's spring-loaded. I could feel it. I have to kind of turn it, you know, with my hand. So what am I going to do to hold it? Well, I actually found the C-clip that probably flew off the old one. I'll try to get that on there. Got it on there. Let's test it, see if it works. Doesn't work. Doesn't go down. Okay, you guys can see that? Got the C-clip on there. And actually it wasn't working because that rubber grommet was uh, not on the bottom. It was the Bendix gear, then the, it was a spring. The Bendix gear, then the rubber grommet, then the washer, then the C-clip. So let's see if it works now. There we go. So, what do we got here? So we got the engine started, runs on its own, did a quick and dirty on the carburetor, fixed the recoil starter, fixed the starter motor, and now it all works, but still leaks, <laughs> which bothers me, you know? Um, so I'm gonna do some research on why it leaks and what this little thing is. What? 
that is. Leave it in the comments, fellas, if you know what that is and why fuel is leaking from there, because the carburetor is pretty clean. Doesn't seem to be leaking now. Weird. So I had it upright, you know, maybe gas leaked out of it, upright. Had to take a uh, while to get the gas back in here again. start with the pull start. Okay, now, what else is wrong with this thing? That's right. Why does it, the auger, move along with once it's started, that also contributes to why it doesn't start very well, is because it's already engaging. So you're putting load on the crankshaft already. So that's why it's difficult to start by pull starting it, you know, because it's already engaging automatically. Also, I found this nut, and I don't know what it's for. <laughs> Just sitting here. So I'm going to have to work on this auger thing. Actually, maybe I'll just pull it off. All right, yeah, let's just take the cover off it. Battery's dying on my uh, drill, my impact. All right, let's take this cover off and see. kinds of stuff on the bottom here too. And they're like worn out from rubbing on the ground. Okay, so uh, I couldn't get this whole thing off, so I just, I'm bending it so you can see. So you know what happened was this belt, right? The, as you can see, there are grooves here, you know, that line up. This thing was like almost on the inside over the lip, the inner lip of this pulley. So it was binding in there. So when you were running it, it was super tight like this, right? Because this thing wasn't sitting in the middle. It was sitting inside, like right there, okay? And so I moved it, and now it's loose, see? So now let's see when we start it.
So, this thing now works just fine. The only problem is, still leaks some gasage. So I'm not gonna put this uh, cover back on yet because I need to figure out why it still leaks, you know what I mean? But, uh, fixed a lot of stuff today. We fixed a lot of stuff today, not because I really wanted to, because this is a piece of junk anyway. I'd be lucky to get $75 to 100 bucks for it, you know what I mean? Uh, but I wanted to see if I could fix everything, you know, even though it was a, it's a crappy little snowblower that's in, it's an okay shape, but it needed a lot of work, you know? But I wanted to fix it all, you know? Uh, so we did a quick and dirty on the carburetor, uh, readjusted the uh, auger belt, back onto the pulley that lined up with the grooves. So now it doesn't bind. Once you start it up, it, uh, it was spinning. So now it's loose, you know, and uh, on the pulley the way it should be. And uh, only engages when you engage the handle. We do have a little bit of a leak coming out of that nozzle coming out of the carburetor. And we fixed the starter motor too. The Bendix gear and replaced it with one that I already had in stock, which is great. Uh, electric start works. Starts up with one pull, fix the recoil starter with the pull rope and the handle. Uh, lots of stuff we did to this today. Um, it's not worth it because this is not worth the effort that I put into it. You know, the machine is not worth any any uh, significant money, you know. But uh, I wanted to do all of it, you know what I mean? To get it going so that I could at least sell it and it's a working machine. But I would like to do some more research on why it leaks out of that little nozzle. I don't think I've ever had that happen before. I don't even really know what that nozzle is for. But anyway, thanks a lot for joining me on today's big fix on this uh, five horsepower Craftsman single stage paddle snowblower. Uh, leave it in the comments, fellas, if you know why it leaks out of that little nozzle. I think the carburetor needs to be cleaned more. I think that's probably it. So maybe we might have to take the whole carburetor back off again put it in an ultrasonic cleaner and put it back on. Maybe we'll do that on the next episode. But leave it in the comments what you think that leak coming out of that nozzle is for. For the time being, I'm gonna plug it up with this. It's a uh, thin fuel line for a uh, weed whacker. And I put a little screw on there to block it. So we're just gonna put it on there for now. Hopefully now it won't leak. I'm gonna put it upright and see if it leaks. So it seems to work now. It doesn't leak anymore and also I adjusted the float level. That's what it was wrong. You know, you adjust the float level so that the pin goes in. Uh, at a certain level so that uh, it's not too low that the needle doesn't seat in the hole, right? And it keeps on dripping and that's what was causing the leak. But I also plugged up that hole. I still don't know what it is, but it doesn't leak anymore. And it starts on one pull from now on. So I'm going to put everything back together again, just the bottom panel and the screws and uh, tighten this handle a little bit and uh, take some pictures of it. Maybe I'll sell it for a hundred bucks, hundred bucks. Thanks a lot for following me along again today on today's uh, Big Fix. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. here and we'll see you next time on mowers and blowers
If you guys enjoyed the video, remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook, as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.